In this third section of this course, we will learn about the exception model, which uses a special kind of convolutional layers, which are called depthwise separable convolutions. This section will be divided into four different lessons. In the first lesson, we're going to load and explore the ImageNet dataset, which is an image classification dataset for object detection. In the second lesson, we're going to learn about the exception architecture and how it uses depthwise separable convolutions. In the third lesson, we're going to implement the exception model using the TensorFlow Keras API. And finally, in the fourth lesson, we're going to train and evaluate our exception model on our ImageNet dataset and evaluate the results. Learn to explore and load our ImageNet dataset. This is an image classification dataset that is used for object detection. This dataset consists of colored images of various sizes. It is a relatively large dataset with over 1 million images and about 1,000 classes. In this lesson, we're only going to look at a sample of that dataset in order to make it easier for us to train and evaluate our model. In our case, we're only going to look at four different classes coming from the ImageNet dataset. Let's jump right into the notebook. Let's first bring in our imports. So we're going to start by downloading our images from our dataset. To do so, we need to use and clone a repo called ImageNet Utils. Simply copy this line into your terminal and run it. This will clone the repo into your local machine. Then when this is done, you can then cd into that directory ImageNet Utils and run this command, download utils, with the flag download images, and then you pass in the WN ID. This ID represents a specific class of images in the ImageNet dataset. And so for this lesson, we're only going to look at four different classes. We're going to download all the dog images, all the human images, cars, and houses. So basically, you'll need to run this command four times, each for each type of images that we wish to download. This will take a bit of time to run. But once this is done, then we can pass on to the next step. You then define your base directory. And then this function will create a path that will lead you to the appropriate class. Once you've downloaded the images onto your computer, you probably noticed that a number of those images did not download properly, either because the link is actually broken or because the image you downloaded is actually a bad image. So to explore the different types of images that you've downloaded, I've given you here a helper function that will plot the image and the pixel distribution. Let's first start with a good image. This is a good image in the dog category. So we call the plot function and then we're going to find the path. So we're going to join the path and we're going to get the, the class path for the dog directory. And then we're going to pass in the good image. So you can see here, we do have a good image of a dog. And on the right, we have the distribution of the pixels. Since this image is pretty light, we've got a lot of pixels on the light spectrum. Now let's look at a bad image. So we're going to actually run the same command here, but this time with the bad image. We can see here that this is not a picture of a dog. And for some reason, this image is no longer available. And so a trick to figure out if an image is good or not is to look at its distribution. We can see here the distribution is quite different. And because most of the image is one color, then we can see the histogram is highly skewed towards one single color. So what we can do is build a filter that will go through each of our, each of our images and try to find out the bad and the good images. So I've created this filter function for you. Here, by taking in the images, we can loop through all the images and try to open them. Once they're open, we can compute the histogram by calling the histogram method. We then can compute the percentage monochrome, which will tell you what percentage of the image is made of just one color by taking the max of the histogram and divide it by the size of the image. We can now filter the bad image by looking at if an image has more than 80% made of just one color, we can assume that this is relatively a bad image. We're also going to filter images that have a width and a height of less than 300 because smaller images will not fit in our model anyway. So those images will be appended to the bad image list. And otherwise, those images will be appended to the good image list. Let's try to run this on our dog classes. So first, we're going to create and get the path to the dog repository. And then we're going to loop through that directory and get all the dog images. Now, we need to get the good images and the bad images. 
from the filtered function we just created. And we simply pass in our dog images. We can see that our filter was able to find 771 good images and 178 bad images. Let's now plot the bad images and see how they look like. So this is our plot image grid that we've used before in a previous lesson that will allow us to plot the bad images into a grid. So we simply called the plot function and then we've got our bad images and we're going to take first 16 images. So we can see here as expected that the bad images are just images with empty frames or just irrelevant content. And what happened to those images, these ones are probably because they're too small. And so because they will not fit into our exception model, we want to get rid of them as well. So now we're going to run our filter function on our entire data set. By looping through the classes, we can then run our filter function on each class. And then we can finally shuffle the good images and save them in a data dictionary. And simply for exploration, we're going to then plot 16 of the top images in the good image list. So I've run this function for you. We can see that in the car class, we're able to remove 200 bad images. And this is a sample of some of the good images. The dogs, we've seen this before, we're able to catch 178 bad images. And this is a random sample of the, those dog images. We've got the humans, which you can see is a pretty diverse bunch of, of image. And finally, we've got the images of the houses. Now that we have downloaded our dataset, and cleaned it from all the bad images, we then need to split our data set into a training and validation set. So we've seen this before, and we're gonna do it again here. So we're gonna use the same helper function that will help us create a new directory and copy the files into it. Then we're gonna create our train validation split function that takes in our data dictionary, loops through it, and applies the split ratio. After shuffling, we'll take the first split into the validation and the second split of images into our training set. We then use those images to construct a directory for the training set and the validation set for each different classes. Let's now run this function. We pass in our base directory, our data dictionary, and we're gonna set the split ratio to 0 0.2. So we can see that now the function created eight different directories. We've got the training set and the validation set for all four classes. We've got for the cars, the dogs, humans, and houses. And it even tells you how many images was copied in each directory. And so at the end, you should get a directory structure that looks as so. Well, we now have our data split into two, a training set and a validation set. And inside each of those, we've got four classes and therefore four subdirectories. 